what's up everyone how are you guys doing and welcome in the next video i know it's been a minute since i've posted something on this channel and it's been even longer since i've posted something related to van life and i know a lot of you subscribed to this channel when i was posting van life videos and then i switched to international traveling so you're wondering probably what happened but as you could saw in the title of this video i unfortunately had to sell my van and quit van life there's a lot of things that influenced me to make my decision and sell my van and quit van life but if you're watching this video you're probably somehow interested in van life you're subscribed to some youtube channels you're probably also following some uh, instagram accounts that are posting uh, van life content and you're watching all of that and you're probably thinking in your head that that's what you want to do but a lot of people forget about the dark side of van life and i would like to tell you a few things that are being simply skipped and people on those channels don't talk about them and I think they're very very important and if you're thinking about converting your car to a camper or moving into a van full-time you should probably remember about those few things after doing van life for a few years and recording also content I can tell you that 90% of what you see online is not true it's not gonna be your true van life experience especially at the beginning because of social media a lot of people are thinking that van life is buying an expensive 4x4 sprinter van having a hot chick next to your side and sleeping in beautiful location every day and not worrying about money and not worrying about anything but that's not the case especially at the beginning you have to remember that there's two sides to van life there is the side where people decide to do it and want to do it because they want to save up some money they want to see the country experience something new and you have the second side the sad side of van life where you have people that are unfortunately forced to live in their vehicles because simply they can't afford rent they have medical conditions that stop them from working and making money so the only thing they can afford is living in a vehicle and that's unfortunately the case when i was traveling around the country meeting people seeing new places i noticed that a lot of people were simply forced into that lifestyle forced to live in their vehicle and if you're getting yourself into van life you have to remember that it's not always beautiful if you don't have a bathroom you're shitting in a bucket in your van or you have to constantly look for a bathroom in a gym or a gas station another important thing where do you get your money when you're doing your van life experience maybe you saved up some money and you're just trying to stretch it as much as possible maybe trying like me do a little bit of uh, social media to see if it's gonna pick up and maybe you're gonna be so lucky to make some money but that's not the case in everyone's situation if you're working a normal job you're forced to stay in one place because you have to show up to that job every day so you're doing van life in the city you're gonna find yourself in situations where you might not feel comfortable sleeping in a certain spot you might get woken up in the middle of the night by uh, police officers or someone from that neighborhood who just doesn't want you over there sleeping on their street so you have to remember about that it's not beautiful if you're not working a remote job even that they're so accessible these days and there's so many of them it's not a case for everyone a lot of people just simply don't qualify uh, because of their education or their skills and they're not able to work those remote jobs and make money but even if you're working a remote job and you're doing van life you have to remember about that you have to stay connected so you need to use Starlink or you need to be in places where you have service so you can actually do that job so there's a lot of limitations that people normally don't speak on their van life channels and that was the case in my situation the last few months of last year uh, I was stuck in one place I wasn't really able to travel around and van life got kind of old really quick and I figured out this is the moment to sell the van I found the right buyer and the price was right so I figured it out I'll let it go and believe me that wasn't the easiest thing because I've put a lot of work and a lot of heart in building that van I built it so it fit my needs perfectly it was a 4x4 E350 just a dream vehicle for a lot of people but like I said before I have a little surprise for you so stay with me to the end of this video and you'll see that this is not the end of van life another thing is that international traveling has been on the back of my mind for a long long time right now and I always wanted to do it but as you know the last few years they haven't been really international travel friendly 
if you know what I'm talking about, there was a lot of restrictions, there was a lot of uh, requirements to enter some countries. So as soon as uh, those countries opened up, I figured it out this is the moment to do it. Everything got lined up perfectly. I had a buyer for the van and I could travel internationally and take you guys with me and show you maybe the more realistic side of international traveling. When the time came to make the decision and sell my van, it wasn't easy to do because I've put a lot of work into that vehicle and put a lot of heart into that build. I had everything that I needed to survive in it or to live in it full time. No matter if I was traveling or just staying in the city, I had everything that I needed. So just to honor the camper van, I made a little tribute video from the best places I visited and I would like to invite you to watch it with me just to say thank you to the camper van for all the memories. So enjoy the video and I'll see you in a minute. Widok na plażę, na ocean, przepięknie.
Editing that video made me a little bit sad, I'm not gonna hide it, but as I mentioned before, this is not the end of van life videos on this channel. Because my friends, I bought myself an ambulance. I've been seeing online more and more of those ambulances being converted to 4x4 camper vans, and I figured it out, I'll try to make out of this my new 4x4 home. So I bought myself a 2006 Ford E450 on the auction in the city of Los Angeles, and this is the 6 liter diesel engine. It's not the faulty one made by Ford, it's the one made by International, which is slightly better, but probably in the near future I'm gonna have to do the EGR delete just to avoid future problems with the engine and make it a little bit more reliable. Like in every ambulance you have a lot of outside storage compartments, which is great, I'm excited about that, and you have the standard interior i know some people just buy an ambulance and simply move into this but i figured it out i'm gonna build it so i'm gonna remove everything to the bare metal and start building the interior so it fits my needs and i have everything that i need because right now there's a lot of stuff that i'm not gonna ever use and there's a lot of stuff that i'm missing here so this is gonna be a very ambitious project in the near future the only thing i did so far with this vehicle is removing the center console with all the switches i just simply shoved it in behind the driver's seat most of the stuff is still plugged in i barely started unplugging and chasing the wires to see which wire goes where because i simply don't have the schematics for it so it's a lot of work to figure it out but this is a a little bit future project another thing i did i cleaned up the whole interior because this vehicle was standing on the auction place with the windows rolled down so you can imagine how dirty this interior was i've been seeing some people converting those ambulances and one thing i noticed is that everyone is going pretty much with the same idea with the same layout even if they pull out everything to the bare metal they still build everything the same way everyone else is doing it and i know you build your vehicle to fit your needs so you have everything that you need if you want to travel in it or live in it full time but all of those ambulances they pretty much look the same inside go on instagram go on youtube look at them the bed is always in the same spot the shower is always in the same spot nobody's trying to do anything innovating but this vehicle has a lot of potential because of the room, because of how it's built. So I think you might find interesting what I'm gonna build inside of this vehicle. And you know what? I'm aware that pulling out everything from the back of the ambulance is not an easy task because all of this is built to last. There's a lot of screws, there's a lot of glue. Before you're gonna get to the bare metal and to the insulation, you're gonna spend a lot of time just pulling this out. And I would like to invite you, my friends, on a journey of converting this ambulance into a 4x4 camper. But this is a future project. Like I told you before, I'm still trying to take advantage of the international traveling. So the next few videos on this channel are gonna be from beautiful places around the world that I'm gonna be visiting in the next two months. But if you're interested in converting this ambulance into a 4x4 camper, please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.